did you decide that 2013 was going to be the year that you were going to tackle the suicide plot? Th that's a, that's a, a wonderful question. And it, there's not an easy answer because we've tried every single year, almost, not, not in 2001, but 2002, 2003, we realized that's a, it's a major issue. And there's different ways to come at it. Uh, but when you think about it, it's one of the most difficult stories to tell in, in a way that is not in any way exploitational um, and that rings really true. And to ring really true, it, it really has to happen to a main character that we know and love because uh, that's what happens in real life. And um, so it's not a case of being able to just bring in somebody for an episode or two and then um, they, they commit suicide. It really has to be a long developing story. And at the beginning of this year, when we met Dylan and we knew that his, you know, his long term dream was to head off to, uh, to California and to Hollywood and talking it over with his agent, he didn't know at the, at the time that we signed him that there would be a suicide, but he knew that something was going to happen. And um, on the day of the read-through, I don't think he knew exactly what was going to happen, but he knew that something was happening, and he was, he was well prepared for it. He, he knew all along that um, something, he may have guessed that it was suicide, but that something was going to happen in episode 32. So that actually goes into our next question, which was, did Dylan know, and was there ever a thought if you weren't going to end Cam's plot, were there any alternatives for Cam's character? Um, it, that came up about four or five weeks before we were shooting episode 32. We really... I was, <laughs> I started to pull back and say, Dylan is doing such a great job. And Dylan was loving doing what he was doing. And the thought of, uh, of leaving the friends and family that he had, uh, you know, sort of bonded with over Degrassi. Remember, he went over to, um, to Ghana as part of the Free the Children trip. So there was a whole group of them living in these incredible conditions where they were faced with themselves but with life in a very very different way and starting to realize how how precious life is and and also how different people in different parts of the world can be happy in very different ways it's not all about being a television star it's not all about you know having money or doing you know there's some very basic uh parts of life that um that you can be very, very happy with. Mm -hmm. And he was discovering this about himself and also, uh, and all the other uh, Degrassians who were there were, uh, were discovering it, some of them, of course, not for the first time. Right. And, um, and he, he was really wanting to, to stay around, but we, um, we all agreed, no, we've gone down this path. We'd already set up some of the signs. When you look back, I think you see the signs. I mean, you know, people who, who jump off uh, high places and break their arms and right. um, there is some, a signal there, even though on the outside he's got this, um, you know, really neat girlfriend, uh, he does well, he's, you know, he's a hockey star. So to somebody just looking in for one episode, they might think, hey, this guy has it made in the shade. Uh, but if you actually look over the, uh, the 32 episodes, you see the signs that are there. And if we were ever going to tell a story, there was no way to, to back out now. So, uh, so we went forward with it. I think it was more so that we didn't want to see the signs. Yeah. Thinking back. Because if you think about it, um, like giving credit to Degrassi's really careful like responsibility for the plot. Right. They did give us these hints along the way. We just didn't want to see it. Yeah. And I mean, and we even brought it up in some of our vlogs that, yeah. you know, we would say, what's, what's wrong with Cam? What's, what's getting at Cam, you know? So. And, and, and when I would read uh, the tweets from people, there were, there were a number of people who really picked up on the fact that he was depressed. Mm -hmm. And we didn't use that word during the 32 episodes because people, people think of depression as just being, oh, you're going around and you're moping and you're feeling sad all the time. No, I mean, that may be one sign of depression, but a lot of it is just, 
it's a different way of reacting, sort of pulling back from the things that you love. And, um, and that's, that's what Cam was doing. Right. What were the read-throughs for these episodes like? Um, the the read through well you've seen the final read through because yes. uh, because we filmed that um, there was some very astute comments along the way because uh, the other actors of course had no idea um, and certainly didn't have any idea when we were reading episode thirty two and and you, you've seen the behind the scenes video of that mm-hmm. but before then there was sometimes I mean the, the actors. Some of them very quickly picked up on the fact that that he was depressed, and that um, you know he was w- the, the fact that he and, and Maya were sort of coming together and not coming together was just another sign of uh, of a depression. Somebody who needed help. What would you say was the motivation um, behind not showing Cam's death? Because that was a question that so many of the fans were really dying to know. Um. The real motivation, and this came from uh, psychologists that we spoke to, uh, both in Canada and the United States, who who gave input, they were very clear, that is not the story that we're telling. Uh, this, is, this is not an exploitational uh, you know, kind of video where, where, where you see something horrible. Um, it really was all about uh, what the reaction was to the people who were left behind. And uh, that, to me, was what I really liked, not just in that episode. Although I thought, Maya, people, of course, um, when you just see that episode, you say, what's going on with Maya? You know, why isn't she, you know, crying? Why isn't she more upset? And, of course, we realize eight episodes later that she was holding it on inside and denying it, and finally it, it does come out. And that, to me, was one of the most rewarding pieces of storytelling that the writers did was we saw over the next eight episodes people reacting in different ways, some highly inappropriately, like, you know, laughing or telling, you know, jokes that made no sense, because <laughs> just trying to uh, trying to deal. And ultimately, the, the major story, of course, was Maya. And uh, that scene, and I, as I tweeted in advance, that scene where she breaks down is one of my favorite uh, Degrassi scenes of all time. Absolutely. One of ours, too. Definitely. Um, I also thought it was interesting, you know, uh, seeing Eli's perspective on it. And to go with that, um, we wanted to know how it was decided that Eli was sort of going to parallel uh, Simpson's whole, you know, uh, tie into the story and how you decided that that was going to be for Eli. Well, there's two sides to that. Certainly, Eli is somebody who has been and, you know, can touch back on the dark side in his own way. And, um, you know, he, he, had a, he is not depressed, he's, he's bipolar, but he goes through periods uh, that are very dark. Mm-hmm. And so it was natural, and also, of course, Monroe is such an incredible actor, it was, it was natural to want to tell uh, a story of him, you know, acting out in, in ways that are believable in the Eli character, uh, and yet, if you were to, if you just talk about it and say, "Oh, he, you know, takes some drugs and then he runs naked through the school," it sounds, "Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> weird." Uh, but with Eli, that is, it's absolutely believable. And you know, one of my other favorite scenes, of course, is when he he comes together with Mr. Simpson, and uh, then in the subsequent scene when um, when Mr. Simpson Snake uh, talks about you know his own. Uh, his own memories from uh, a long while ago, and uh, that uh, that's very touching. How many series get to reference something from decades ago right. that that people that a lot of the fans i mean you of course as uber fans <laughs> right. um, but but a lot of the fans can recognize, yeah, that's right, he did go through that that makes sense. he understands uh, it, what a what a treasure to be able to uh, to have the the ability to write a scene like that. Mm-hmm. So we heard there might be something going on today where there might be some scripts being read for the new season. And we were wondering if you could tell us what, what might be going on today. Well, no, there is a read-through, and it's actually coming up uh, fairly soon. I, I'll describe what happens on the day of a read-through. It's usually around 4 o'clock, so right now it's a little bit after 3 o'clock Eastern time. 
And there'll be some actors who are here already because they're doing some wardrobe fittings or whatever. But then slowly other actors will come in and then they'll all gather together in some place. Now, usually it's the big boardroom. But today we, uh, we're doing casting in the big, big boardroom. We do this for, uh, for every episode for the day players that come in. So the, uh, the front reception area is filled with people in business suits and then they'll go out and then there'll be people looking like moms or whatever and they'll, uh, and they'll go out. So the, uh, the production boardroom, uh, which is quite a large room, is filled. So we're actually going to do the read-through in the cafeteria, the real cafeteria that used to be the Degrassi cafeteria in the old days uh, before we moved into the set cafeteria. The old cafeteria where we had that food fight in 2003, which is still one of the actors' favorite scenes of all time because they got to fling food around uh, <laughs> desperately. <laughs> so um, anyway, I was talking about that. So they all gather together and you just hear from you know other parts of the building that there's this gaggle of actors together. And some of them haven't seen each other in a little while because they may not have been in, in the recent episodes. Mm -hmm. And so they're all excitedly talking. Yeah. And then you know you file in. Well, then we don't file in today because it's the cafeteria. And then, uh, and then sit around and do the read through. So we'll read through four scripts. And the first two we'll read through and it's, they're timed. The actors have never seen the scripts before. They've never read them. They have no idea what's going on. They're face down on the table in front of them, just like an exam. And then uh, the stopwatch goes, and they flip it over, and they just start reading. Now, all the writers are there, and Linda and I are there, and the director will be there. And um, they just read the, down the page, and as they come to their part, they... Um, they read what is there, and they bring whatever they've got because they're, they're sort of following along. Mm -hmm. and then after we've read two scripts, we take a break and talk about the previous two scripts. Then we read the final two scripts and have a big discussion about it. Excellent. So that will be happening starting in about uh, 45 minutes. Oh, mm. very exciting. Kind of going along with that, can you tell us anything about maybe some new characters we might be seeing? You know, anything we might be expecting along those lines? Well, as you know, and by the way, I am taking pictures of these read-throughs, but I, I just, I can't put them out Quite until yet. after the broadcasters have announced who the new actors are. Right, right. And around that time, I can probably release uh, the titles of the scripts. Maybe this afternoon after this, now that I think of it, I can probably release the title of the first script. Now, uh, that's 1301. Mm -hmm. Um... So I'll try and do that. Um, there are, I think, now that there's uh, some new characters who are more, sort of more background roles, but I think if I'm counting correctly, there are there's three or four that have more major roles for the, uh, the summer block. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're going to like them. We uh, did auditions of over 3,000 um, people to uh, to come up with uh, you know what we felt was the right mix um, and uh, and they'll they'll start off right off the top in 1301 1302 then there there's actually a character a main character at least one that won't come in until the fall block maybe a couple of other more uh, more minor characters mm -hmm. interesting <laughs> um, so we recently heard that Alex Steele won't be returning to the show, and we just wanted to know if we might be seeing an ending for Tori's character? No, I'm really hopeful that um, th that the character may come back again. So okay. we're not, uh, th there's not going to be a, an ending. It really, uh, the, the writers had sort of written themselves a little bit into a box and wanted to do some different things, and it worked out this way. And Alex herself was keen to, uh, you know, try doing some more movie type of roles and other things, and, and, and uh, just some other things in her life. And so it worked out just to sort of fade her into the background. She's such a wonderful person. Uh, it, you know, it's hard not to love her. She's a great actress. And so I really hope, I, it may not be this year, but I really hope we'll be seeing more of Tori. Oh, great. Great. Now, I know that a lot of the fans have been hoping for this, and we're not really sure when it'll happen, but we were hoping maybe you had an idea of some sort of Party with Degrassi type events happening in the future. We, we always 
hope for that. And, and it is in the works. A lot of it is in the hands of the broadcasters. Mm -hmm. I'm 90%, maybe even 95% certain that we will have the kind of parking lot uh, premiere um, at, in the Much Music parking lot, which is always great fun because, you know, there's a bunch of uh, fans, there's a bunch of the the actors love it. The actors love interacting with the fans, and the actors will not have seen that first episode. The first episode, by the way, will be an hour long. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be it'll be thirteen oh one, thirteen oh two, in effect. And um, yeah, that'll be. Now we've had very good luck with the weather in the past. Um, if it's pouring rain, then we can move everybody mostly inside into the Much Music Studios and. Uh, uh, and have the screening there. But hopefully it'll be one of those beautiful July nights uh, when we can go out, have some fun, talk with fans, intermingle, and then uh, watch the brand new episode. Speaking of being at Much Music, what do you think we can sort of expect for the summer finale? Um, the graduation yes. uh, episode coming up? Mm -hmm. Well, I think you can expect, um, what shall I call it, a graduation. <laughs> Excellent. And um, I think when we did our interview uh, a few weeks ago, you asked, uh, are there hats being flung in the air, or caps being flung in the air? And I assured you there were. And, of course, you then saw uh, Teen Nick, I hadn't even known this, coming out as part of their um, uh, promotion, you know, showing all the caps being uh, thrown in the air. Oh, yeah. There also will be, I'm very pleased to say, uh, you know, some playing of that Land of Hope and Glory song <laughs> that the Degrassi uh, band always wants to play for graduation. Mm -hmm. um, and there will be somebody giving the, uh, the graduation speech. And then there will be something else that happens at that ceremony that I call a graduation. Wonder. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a prom might be going on. Maybe. Um, <laughs> there is certainly there is certainly a celebration, a prom-like <laughs> celebration, let's say, uh, that has some very cool moments in it. 